Hi everyone, my name is Brittany. I am a family nurse practitioner and I'm also one of the NP instructors here at SMMP Reviews. Today we are going to do a quick overview of a medication class that has received a lot of attention lately and that is the GLP-1 agonist. These medications have been trending lately, so definitely one to be familiar with for your future practice and for your certification exam. This is just one of many classes that can be used in the treatment of diabetes mellitus type 2. If you are interested in a more in-depth look at diabetes or diabetes treatment, our review courses are a great resource. Let's go ahead and get started. So GLP-1 agonists is short for glucagon-like peptide 1 agonists. The medication names in this group end in tide. So a good example of this is semaglutide or ozempic. It can be a little tricky to remember which medications fit into which class, and you know we love our memory tricks around here. So one way that we remember these is to think that GLP stands for green laundry pods, and the medication names end in tied, like the laundry detergent. It might seem a little silly, but for testing purposes, those memory tricks can really help things stick. These medications mimic incretin hormones in the gut. This stimulates glucose-dependent insulin secretion and slows gastric emptying. This makes the patient feel full faster. And this is one of the main reasons this class has become quite popular recently because these are great for weight loss assistance. Now, what common side effects should we warn patients about with this class? With that slowed gastric emptying, we should definitely be warning patients about possible nausea and we should encourage smaller meals, especially when they're increasing their dosage. This medication class is mostly administered via weekly injections. However, there are more oral options being released. Aside from weight loss, there are a couple of major benefits for using this medication class. GLP-1 agonists are cardioprotective and kidney protective, so this is a major benefit for patients with diabetes who are at higher ASCVD risk. So let's do a quick practice question. This is a great way to apply the content to different patient scenarios. The nurse practitioner is considering prescribing dulaglutide or trulicity for a patient with a new diagnosis of diabetes mellitus type 2. Which of the following conditions would be a contraindication for, these, for this medication? So we have A, hepatitis B, B, hypothyroidism, C, medullary thyroid cancer, and D, systemic lupus erythematosus. So take a second here, pause the video if you need to, so you can have a minute to think about the answer before moving on. So the correct answer here is C, history of medullary thyroid cancer. So a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer and multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 are boxed warnings for GLP-1 agonist use. Although it's not an official boxed warning, we should also avoid giving these medications to anyone with a history of pancreatitis. And here are some of the references used for this video. I also just wanted to give a shout out to some of our other resources for those who are preparing for their exams. Check out our website, npreviews.com. We also have a free Facebook group for those who are preparing to become a real deal nurse practitioner. It's a great place to find support on your NP journey. Diabetes mellitus treatment options are likely to be on the certification exams, and these medications are going to come up often in your future practice. GLP-1 agonists are a great medication class that can provide major benefits for our patients. That's all for today. Make sure to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date on our upcoming videos.